I think we just start. So good morning, everyone. It's Dexter from A2K. And thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Automating the Design Process with Core Orange. So technical consultant Jeff Gale will be presenting for us. Before we start, we'll just go through about A2K, all about fostering innovation through consulting and training. A2K Technologies plays a vital role in helping infrastructure, building, mining, construction, architecture, and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services such as education, consulting, and IT managed services. Working with visionaries to shape the future of design and in turn enable them through innovation to minimize risks, improve productivity, and achieve excellence. A2K Technologies is considered the business partner of choice and trusted advisor by vendors and clients. We partner with major software and hardware vendors to meet the client's technology needs. We strive to exceed clients' expectations by understanding the challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. We work with clients and companies of any size nationally and abroad. Over to you, Jeff. Okay. Thanks, Dex. Um, and welcome everybody to this uh, presentation. Um, as you would be aware, having registered, we're gonna be talking about uh, automating uh, publishing. Of, uh, of your design data from, um, from Vault using Power Jobs Automation, which is a product from a company called Cool Orange. So we'll be covering a number of aspects of that over the next uh, hour or so, maximum. Uh, we'll try and keep it within that time frame, hopefully less. Uh, I appreciate that everybody's busy and uh, got lots to do. So we'll, uh, we'll get through this information as quickly, but as thoroughly as possible. Just a couple of introductions, um, just to let you know who else is on the call with us today. Uh, as, as Dexter's already said, my name's Jeff Gale. I'm a technical consultant. I've worked with uh, A2K um, and uh, a number of other um, vendors and uh, Autodesk themselves over the last uh, 20 to 30 years. I've uh, been in the industry for quite some time and working with A2K now in, uh, in this area of Vault uh, implementation and uh, automation with products like Cool Orange. We also have um, JC Davis on the call, who uh, was previously working in Australia with A2K and is now relocated uh, back to the States, but uh, is the ANZ Technical Solutions Executive for Cool Orange products. So he knows the market here very well, having spent uh, quite a number of years here up until very recently. I think we also have Milt uh, Capsimalis on the call. Uh, Milt's the North American uh, Operations Manager for Cool Orange. And then from A2K, uh, as you've already heard, we've got Dexter, who's the marketing coordinator, and Jason Howarth, who some of you may have spoken to in the past, who is the strategic, strategic account manager. So there's a number of us on the call, and later on in the call, there'll be an opportunity for some Q&A, and, uh, and I'll endeavour to answer any of those questions, but some of these guys may be um, wanting to jump in with um, uh, some more information if they can offer that towards the end of the call. So just going through the quick agenda for today, we'll, we'll ask the question, you know, why automate? Um, why, uh, why are we doing this? Um, you know, I'll, um, I'll go through a number of different areas where we can make a difference there. Um, manual versus automated publishing, we'll talk about the, dif the difference in the two processes there and, um, and find out what uh, kind of a difference automation can make. There's a couple of case demos that we'll, we'll run through. We've got some videos to show you on uh, what, uh, what is required to do this sort of thing manually and then how we can use Cool Orange to, um, to go through and automate that process. Um, then talk about some conclusions, return on investment gains. So uh, that's always a, a challenge uh, coming up with any sort of quantitative and uh, possibly qualitative uh, returns on this sort of solution. It's hard to sometimes put a dollar figure or a quality figure on, uh, on what sort of difference this can make to you, your workflows. Um, we'll go over the solution overview. We are talking about a standard offering that A2K are packaging up to put together for you here. And then we'll talk about the next steps and have a Q&A session at the end. So um, let's move in and have a look at some, uh, some compelling events there firstly about why why would you uh, automate publishing? So firstly, you can see there that um, manual publishing often requires quite a high level of effort from uh, engineers or designers, project managers, controllers, and various other people um, that need to publish and distribute some of uh, the files that are generated by your engineering department. And more importantly, uh, publishing the current files at all times. Uh, it's always a challenge to make sure that people are getting the latest version of a file as they go through various different life cycles. And uh, while Vault is very good at doing that and maintaining those documents internally, we also need to make sure that people externally are receiving those files at the right time. Um, you can see there point number two, manual publishing um, from the native design files can consume up to 50% of engineers and uh, project managers and designers time. It can be quite a consuming process. 
um, to make sure you've got the right type of file extracted from uh, your source files and distributed to the right locations. Uh, typical uh, output put files are consistent. Um, uh, the PDF files, DXF, CSVs, uh, SAT files, dumb model files, um, when I say dumb models, they're just maybe uh, models that have had the intelligence stripped back if you need to distribute those to external organisations. So quite often we can uh, reduce that number of other file types down to a small number that are regularly published out to external users. And, um, and finally, publishing automation is one of the things that businesses can do to increase their bottom line by, um, by reducing risks and increasing productivity and quality. Uh, it's a very, um, it's a low hanging fruit area for a lot of people that are looking to um, try and uh, reduce some of the errors and, and take away some of the time it takes to do some of these things. So that's the sort of things that we're looking at uh, being triggers for these sort of events. Um, and some of that information we're talking about has been backed up in things like um, uh, Gartner reports. Um, you can see some of the uh, information there, intelligent process automation reports, uh, and you can download some of those reports from the web and get a look at, um, at how, how these, these practices can make a difference to your day-to-day -day operations. So let's have a look uh, firstly at the traditional manual process uh, of what people may go through to produce some of these files. Uh, I'll step through that and then we'll have a quick look at a video uh, which shows that process in real time. Um, we've got a vaulted project there and you've probably got a file that needs to be published, a drawing file, and often you'll go out to a DWF, which is the viewing file inside Vault, and you may also need to publish that, DD, DW, uh, that sorry, IDW file to a PDF. The PDF file maybe then needs to be um, generated. It will be given some kind of a file name following some kind of a naming convention. You can see there we've got things like project name and number a part number, maybe a revision and a sheet number as well. So there's information that tends to get built into those project, uh, those file names. And then once we've done that, we need to go out and maybe externally locate that on a folder which is accessible to non-Vault users. So we'll take that PDF file, send it over there and manually save it to a folder over there in a location and bring it back into the Vault. Uh, having done that, we then notify the next user group. Maybe we need to tell somebody that uh, that, that needs to be done. The next step might be to take the uh, assembly file possibly of the drawing and send it out to a step file. So again, we go through the same process. We would take that step file, push it out to a folder and move that step file back into Vault as a, a, an internal record of that having been put out there. So that again is a manual process. Um, finally, we might take an IPT file and send that out to an STL or an, uh, some other sort of STP file or a, a, a SAT file. That may go to sheet metal for um, a manufacture or it could be something that needs to be machined. So once again, it could be a DXF file or some other type using the same file name. We would take that, move that over to a manufacturing folder and also copy that back into Vault there. So there's a number of different steps that we go through. Same sort of thing in an, in a, uh, an AutoCAD uh, scenario where we might go out to PDF files, CSVs or DXF files. So the same kind of process may need to be gone through. I'll just go um, and have a look at a, a quick video here that goes through some of that process in the context of Inventor. We'll go out to a video here. You can see we've got Vault running here and uh, we're changing the state of a file. So a file's gone from a work in progress to a review state. And then what we need to do there is to maybe produce a file there to notify somebody. So you can see here that uh, we'll take uh, those files, for example, and uh, retrieve them. Uh, we're gonna go through check them out. They're all sitting in Vault at the moment. So in order to produce external files for use by other people for review, we need to get them out of Vault, open them up in our inventor session. And then we start to go through and uh, work through individual files there to produce them. So the first thing we're doing is manually going out and saving this assembly file as say an STP file. So we have to go through that process there. We're opening the file up in inventor, doing a save as, changing the file type and, uh, and then saving that to a location. That file may then need to also be moved to a separate location outside of the, that uh, working folder. So now we're drilling down into the assembly and going through and picking up individual components and producing step files of those as well. You can see we're going down into the assembly, back up to the top level. Uh, apologies for anyone there who's not familiar with Inventor, but we're basically moving up and down through the assembly hierarchy and producing step files of each of these parts which then need to be uh, saved to an external location and sent out for manufacture, possibly to a third party manufacturer. So you can see there's a, there's a bit of a process involved there. And we come back into Vault. You can see there that we've, uh, we've got back to there, the files are under review 
And, uh, and then what we're doing is taking those files that have been saved in our local machine there. You can see they're in a project folder. We need to get all those step files that we've produced externally and we need to check them into Vault because they don't exist in Vault. So not only do we have to produce them in our inventor software, but we then need to introduce them back into Vault um, so that we have an internal record of those. So there's a bit of a, a process there that people are going through to produce these files. And it's something that's a manual process. The other thing that we're doing here is creating attachments. So what we're doing is creating a link between those step files and the original files which are linked to them. So we can take the, uh, the carburetor step file, for example, and link it to an assembly file so that we have a link there. You can see down the bottom, we can create an attachment and there's the step file which is linked to that. So there's quite a process involved in going through that. And if you have a lot of models and you're going through, you can imagine how long it takes for each of those files to be attached to its source file. And it's, uh, it's quite a process there that we need to go through, uh, particularly if you're working with uh, uh, in, uh, companies that are doing external manufacture and uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping a record of these files that are being sent to those external manufacturers and uh, and keep those records internally so there's quite a quite a process involved there in um in running that this is going through and doing a bit more attachment i might stop that uh that file there now but you certainly get the idea of uh of how involved that is in terms of going through that process and that was only for one assembly and, uh, and so that assembly might have a half a dozen parts. So you can see the amount of time that it takes to go through and produce that. And all the time we're doing that manually, we're exposing ourselves to any sort of human error. It could be a key keyboard error, could be some sort of a naming convention that isn't followed, uh, a file might be missed. Uh, there's a number of different things that can go wrong there because we're requiring human interaction to make sure that that process, which is the same every time, is, uh, is followed to the letter so that we have consistent um, uh, production of that data uh, on triggers like a review or a release cycle. And then we obviously notify the next user group as well when all of that happens. So you can see the number of times that that may happen. So in terms of uh, a couple of questions that I might ask you just to put that in context for some of you guys that are listening here, um, I wonder how many um, designers or creators you have in your business today. Uh, maybe you fall in the zero to three uh, category, you might be three to 10 or you could be larger than 10. That's a number that uh, we'd be interested in hearing uh, from you guys about, um, about what category you fall into. Obviously, as that number increases, you would potentially be spending more and more time and money on that process that you just saw when you've got a number of designers inside the company who are going through that process of, of creating those additional files, uh, managing the naming of them, the placing of them, the notification, the reintroduction back into Vault. There's a number of steps there. And maybe, uh, you know, do you have any non-CAD users involved in your review and approval processes? So if you've got people that are sitting there not involved in day-to-day -day design work, but they are involved at a project management level, they may be the people that need to be notified that uh, a file has come up for review or release possibly. And uh, we need processes in place so that when those files become available, it would be great to be able to automatically notify those people that those files are ready in their in-tray to have some, some kind of uh, next step performed on them, whether that be a review process or some kind of distribution. So there's a number of things there. Um, in terms of the sort of things that you may, uh, you may create externally, do you package up your files and send them um, out to shared drives or network locations? Many people we find do do that kind of thing. Um, we have people that publish those files and they may go outside of the vault because they've got another department within the company or there may be another company that picks up that shared drive if it's a cloud location. So we want to automate the process of putting those files into, um, into that location at the right time. And finally, the question there, what formats do you publish? Uh, maybe it's just PDF, but you can see some other examples there. STEP files, STL files, SAT files, DXF files. There's a number of different file formats that people publish. Um, PDF is a very common one for a lot of people that maybe rely on PDF as a final output format for release documentation. But as you saw there, there may be other files for use for manufacturing along the way that need to be produced and uh, output um, to either the vault itself or to external locations for those third party um, providers to be able to pick up on. So there's a few questions there that uh, we would like you to certainly ask yourself and, uh, and they would prompt some of the um, uh, some of the need to have a look at this kind of uh, offering that we're talking about today. 
So let's have a look at uh, an, an example now, having looked at the manual process that we go through, let's have a look at how that process might work in the context of a Cool Orange uh, publishing automation process. So we have down in the corner there a vaulted project which is running with um, a work in progress state. Uh, those files may go to a review stage and then finally to a release stage. So we have some, a, a series of automation steps that might happen at the release state. So what happens in Vault is that the user with one click would move a file from a work in progress or another state into released. So that changes the state of the file within, within Vault. That then triggers Cool Orange to kick into place. So what happens is that the transition or the line between review and released is effectively the trigger to run a number of different processes. And you can see here on the IDW file, we would be updating some properties and performing a number of published tasks. Just gonna check here, we've got a bit of chat coming through and just make sure that, uh, that we've got nothing that needs to be addressed. Uh, thanks guys, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything there. Um, so we're going through uh, a number of different tasks there and let's have a look at how they, how they occur. Um, let me come back to here, okay. So the, the drawing is moved to a release state. We firstly publish the PDF. So the PDF would get published out automatically using the uh, automation software and then possibly even renamed based on some defined properties. You can see there we've got a file name with maybe an underscore B for the revision and an underscore two for the page number, for example. So we have full control over the naming of those files. Once that file's been created, it can also then be put back into Vault and uh, a number of ID, uh, DWFs would get published as well with that updated information. And finally would create a link between those files so that the PDF is linked as a, uh, as a subsequent file to the master or the source file. And then finally, we notify the release group. So that may be a, a, a group of people, maybe in a manufacturing department, for example, who are, uh, are maybe waiting to get notification that files have been released for manufacture. And they may pick up on that PDF file as a means of, uh, of making sure that what they're working from is always the release document. And because that's been controlled by Cool Orange as a process that is triggered by that move from review to released, we know that the users of those files are only getting released PDF files because it's only happening at the point where the drawing is actually released in Vault. Let's have another look at another one here. We've got an assembly file which is being automated at the review state. So once again, we've got the same project down there with a number of different states. We have a user there that's moving from uh, work in progress to review. So as that file is moved from the work in progress or the orange bubble through to the review state, that kicks off a process in Cool Orange, and that Cool Orange process is going to go through and run a number of tasks. There can be more than one. So we've got obviously the uh, the review state is triggered. We might publish a step file of the IPT of the IPT files and the assembly file. So all of those files can be picked up as they move through and they're put in a queue and the STP files are created. Again, they can be named as well. They might have a revision number, a part number. The formatting can be completely controlled by the uh, automated routine that runs during this transition. Uh, once that's done, we will then move those files back into Vault. So they become part of our history and DWF files are created. And again, a link is created to the STP file. Finally, the group that's uh, been asked to review those files, whether it be an STP or some other kind, is notified again. So that can be the last step in that process so that rather than having to go in and search all the time and see if there's work waiting for you, you can get a link uh, placed into an email. And when you receive the email, that, that email could, create a, it could contain a link that would point you directly back into the file within Vault that you are up to have a look at. And finally, the assembly file, another example there when we move an assembly from uh, the review to the release state. So again, you can see there it's a one-click process for the user. We simply select the file in Vault and change its status from for review to released. And that would automatically kick off a process once it hits the released stage. Cool Orange would come along and do its stuff again. So similar to the last examples, you can see there that we would publish STP files. They would get created. Uh, they would also probably get renamed based on certain properties. So you can see, again, the name is not necessarily the same as the original. That thing gets moved back into Vault. The DWF files are published once again, and a link is created between the source file and the STP file. Um, we may also send copies out to an external location. So you can see here that the uh, files and the folders are created, and those step files are also copied out to the external folder, like we did in the original uh, example. 
you can see there that that can also be part of the process. Once all of that initial process is done, we can finally send that to an external folder and then the release group can be notified so that they can, uh, that, that email can say that there is a new file sitting in folder XYZ and they only need to go and pick that file up and know that the file that they're looking at in that folder is the latest one because it's been created as part of a process on the release of that file. So we're looking at trying to limit the number of mistakes here by making sure that all of these things in that point, the bullet points down the center of the screen are only triggered when the file is moved into a state where they should be executed. And, uh, and that's where we reduce some of that uh, human error by making sure that that list of things is, is automated and programmed and is carried out every time a file moves into that state. In terms of some quality assurances and control, we have what, call, what are called guardrails. So guardrails are using a, um, using a term which um, kind of protects you from going outside the lines a little bit. So that an example of that might be when a file has been submitted to be processed uh, and it's under, under review possibly, it's getting some files published, those files are getting sent to external locations and somebody wants to come back along and, um, and do something to that file before it's finished executing the previous process. So using a product called Power Events, which is a small program that sits on the client's computer that, that uh, interacts with their Vault client software that they're running, they can give you some guardrails to make sure that you don't try and do things to files prematurely that are under some kind of a processing um, process. Um, so you can see here that uh, if we uh, run something where we move a file back to work in progress, for example, a released file moves back to work in progress. Uh, you can see there that, that for example, that carburetor file, uh, the power events program would pop up a, a block on that process if somebody wants to start working on it again, where it uh, can't be moved back into work in progress because it's currently being processed in some way. So until that um, until that process is complete and the release documents have been published and distributed and issued to various people and parties, that move from the released state back into work in progress to do some new change is not allowed to occur. So power events becomes your guardrail to make sure that you're not changing a file that's in process. Much the same thing again, we can have an example where uh, if I go through another click there, we're trying to move a file from review to released and it goes back again. And you can see there that the, um, the part number doesn't match the new numbering scheme, for example. So we can check on things like whether a part is not, um, is not compliant with, uh, with various different types of, um, of, of naming conventions, for example. So there might be some information that's missing. So the guardrail could be about applying uh, data quality checks. So again, the power events would kick in and say, if you do want to release that file, there's a piece of information or a numbering scheme or something like that that needs to be tidied up so that you can assure consistency in your, uh, in your file naming and your processes and not leave out critical information that you want to be consistent across all of your files. Once again, taking away the human error factor and ensuring that your data gets right the way through to the release state with, uh, with the correct quality of data that you want to apply to all of your files. Uh, so in terms of conclusions there, if we have a look at, uh, at the, uh, the publishing automation uh, options that we can apply there, um, Cool Orange uh, basically takes away a lot of the work that you could certainly do within Vault uh, manually. Uh, and, and sometimes that might be a quite a, a complicated process. But, um, but some of the things we can do is obviously the automation. You can see there, it's all triggered by Vault transition state changes. So, so when we move something from work in progress to review, or from review to released. That automation is triggered by that, that, um, that state change. And uh, we can put any number of routines in at any of those transitions to be executed automatically. And it guarantees that we're gonna have those, um, those uniform processes performed on files simply by moving them from one state to another. Second one is completely configurable. Uh, we can configure uh, our, this, uh, this process to be uh, carried out on any file type any transition state change, uh, any kind of unique identifiers. We have a full scripting environment within, uh, within Cool Orange, which allows us to identify a process by any number of different ways. And these processes can be configured to run at any particular transition that you want, whether it be from work in progress to review, review to released, or released back into work in progress. Uh, we, can, uh, we can completely customize when and how these uh, automated scripts run. Uh, within all of the different transitions that are available in your Vault lifecycle. 
the next thing is obviously the consistent uh, and reliable carrying out of these tasks. There's no human uh, human touch or error factors involved. We don't need to check on a list to make sure that we've done them. Uh, it's very easy for someone to go through a procedure list and, and publish those files manually. They've only got to get tapped on the shoulder and asked a question by somebody and they can come back and miss one of those steps. And uh, it might be a critical component in getting some parts sent out for manufacture. And it could be quite an expensive mistake if somebody just um, completely inadvertently misses one step in that process. So here we're, we're basically having zero contact with the process and relying on Cool Orange to completely automate that process. Next one is obviously that it's profitable. You can turn all of those points that we've made above there into profit because we're reducing and eliminating uh, errors and we're automating the tasks. They're certainly being carried out much faster than we can do them as a manual process, as you saw in the very first video that we played. Um, and uh, and you can certainly, um, you can find that um, what uh, what happens there is that the, the, real, the real ability to save money there is, uh, is to automate these processes so they happen at machine speed rather than human speed. So um, there's, quite, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, process there. Um, what, I, what I've just realized is that I wanna go back and just show you, if I can go back to one of the previous slides, I'll go back to um, one of these and, uh, and show you um, how that might be carried out in an uh, automated process. So I'm gonna go back and show you this last one here which is a video like we saw at the, the uh, first example. I'll show you this one about producing these files and copying them to the external folder uh, on release. So if we run this video, you can see here that we've got the carburetor file, which is uh, having a change of state. It's going from review through to released. It's being done in Vault. And we simply press the OK button there. Uh, there might be a couple of restrictions there in terms of what's happening, but we can get over those obviously. So all those files have been released. And, uh, and then what uh, we're able to do is uh, go through and see that the job queue has automatically queued up a number of different um, processes there within the job server. So this is, a, this is where we're having a look at the back end of Vault and it's automatically submitting all of those jobs that have been released. And we're changing across to the Cool Orange job processor, simply pausing and restarting it. You can see there that it's going through and processing all of those files. And that script would be doing the creation, the copying, the moving of the files, checking the back in, doing the attachments, and also notifying people at the end of the day. So we're going out here to an external location. You can see that the step files have been created in that external location. And this is all happening at uh, processing speed within the Cool Orange uh, console there. Uh, and again, you can see we've we worked our way down. We've got all of, almost all of them done now. One is pending, one is in the process of getting done. And you can see how quickly that it goes through and generates all of those files. So that's gone through the whole process there of copying all of those files, the step files out to, um, out to the uh, external location for somebody to pick up. And, uh, and as we come back in and have a look in here, you can see the step files have been re-added back into there. Uh, they may have links uh, made and there would be an email that's also been submitted out to an external group that says that those files are available. So uh, apologies for that, uh, that there, where I just omitted to do that uh, earlier on. Uh, let me come back to here though, and I'll just step back through that process once again and get through to these points. So um, we will uh, we'll finally, finally finish up here with uh, another point at the end of this, uh, the automation publishing uh, capabilities. This uh, solution is completely um, agile and scalable. Uh, it can be configured for uh, for most redundant coordination tasks there, as it says. So certainly what we're saying there is that this uh, Cool Orange solution can be put onto either a single uh, job processor, which might be a machine running in the background that takes these jobs that you saw in that queue. And, uh, and it would run those uh, on a single server. Or if you've got a larger team, you can certainly uh, identify that certain jobs might be run on multiple job processes. So you can increase the, uh, the, um, the speed at which those jobs in the queue are processed by running more than one job processor. And you can also go really go to town with the level of complexity of some of those jobs, as long as they can be programmed in using uh, the PowerShell programming environment. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a very... Um, a very friendly way of writing those scripts. Uh, it's of, often um, PowerShell is a, is a programming mode that's known to a lot of people already. And, uh, and that can be done either by an internal team or we can uh, be engaged to help you uh, design and write some of those scripts and then configure those into the job processor at various transitions within the vault processes. 
So there's a number of uh, a number of different areas there. You can see there we've got a number of different file types as well: PDF files, TIFF, JPEG, uh, bitmaps, uh, GIF files. Uh, all different file types can be produced and automated through through this scripting, and uh, and that, that's all all processes that maybe take quite a lot of time when uh, when you're working with uh, the human um, the human factor there of producing those files and reliably following a process every time. In terms of some of the uh, quantitative gains, you can see here we've got some examples. We have some documentation that's available for you to have a look at where you can punch in some numbers and, uh, and we'll give you some idea of how much it's actually costing you to, um, to do some of these processes. You can see here we've got an example of one designer, one engineer and one project manager per project per year at a cost of uh, $2,080 per hour per year. Um, so you've got savings there of 9.8% or 203 hours. Um, sorry, 2,080 hours per year. I apologize for that. I think I used dollars there. Um, so we can save something like 203 hours. And if you were to extract that information out in terms of cost, that would be a significant amount of money that you're saving there in terms of automating some of these processes that are carried out a number of times a week by a number of people per project. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that typically people are not, um, are not necessarily um, very geared up to do, to have a look at these qu quantitative um, returns. And we have some documentation there that can help you put that in. If you're the person that maybe needs to build a case to go to your manager or your, your, um, uh, you know, your superior in your organisation, um, they, they might be wanting you to come with some sort of a case justification. And we have some documentation there that can help you do that in terms of the overall cost. Uh, in terms of qualitative, uh, we can also then start to prevent errors, which means that the wrong files are getting published, uh, reducing those errors and omissions. So you can see there that we might have, um, you know, an example of the picture there where we've got the car. We've got the right doors, but we have the wrong colour. And, uh, and so things might look okay, but then when they all go together, it's not quite right. So it's very important to make sure that we've got the right revisions of particularly fast moving uh, product, consumer product type product, um, objects and products where people are in that market. Um, things move very quickly and change very quickly. And we want to make sure that people are accessing the right version of a file at the right time. Uh, it may look like it's not a big error, but when things finally come together in a completed assembly, it can make a big difference. And certainly things like returns can be quite expensive depending on the cost of the equipment that's being provided in the first place. Um, so you can see there again, uh, what we're doing here in terms of looking at uh, the ability of Cool Orange to reduce those, we're looking at publishing the right file every time to the right location with the right name. And particularly in these areas, as I said, with engineering, where you've got lots of parts that are changing often in very complex assemblies, it's critical that you get those first two points um, down pat every time because we can, we can make some very expensive mistakes by having the wrong part delivered to the wrong assembly line at the wrong time. Design changes need to be kept up to date. If we go from a revision A to revision B, we need to make sure that people are notified at the right time, not and up to and not before the point where revision B comes available. So it's critical to make sure that that notification happens at the right time. Uh, things like production sequencing is very important to make sure that we're getting the right products at the right time in those high volume production line scenarios. What we're doing here, though, is the, the automation is, uh, is a byproduct of your design workflow. That's the critical thing. Rather than making sure we're going through a process of ticking off those tasks at a particular time, just by moving your documents from one state to another, from, say, uh, review to released, we are automating that workflow process so that all you need to do is tell the file its new state and all of those processes are carried out automatically using the Cool Orange um, power jobs uh, scripting environment. And obviously we're maximizing productivity and skills because we're not tying people up doing things like producing files, saving them to locations, renaming them, distributing them to teams, and then notifying those people that they're available. We're leaving uh, high value people like engineers and designers um, in front of their screens doing the high value tasks of you know, engineering and designing um, so that they can get down to what they're being paid for and not get tied up doing the more of the mundane administration type tasks, which can be automated by products like Cool Orange. So, in conclusion, um, just to cover off on those, the obviously the, the you know the most obvious way to improve some of your processes by automating the standard processes that you have. 
And this, uh, this package service offering that we have is leveraging your existing vault. Uh, we're assuming that uh, most of the people on the call and certainly most of the people we'll be talking to about this already have vault installed. You're aware of that process. So um, in terms of what you need to know to make this happen, uh, you don't really need to change your processes at all. You just simply move your file from a state to a state and these processes get carried out in the background automatically. So it's very cost effective and we can very quickly automate those high priority tasks uh, like PDF generation and email, which are two of the obvious ones that do need to be generated manually without these type of systems in place. So what we're doing is extending your existing vault job processor. Cool Orange Power Jobs uh, attaches itself to your existing vault job processor, but extends the functionality into these customizable um, automated jobs. We can uh, enhance your vault workflows with those automatic, automated actions and that, that, uh, that results in profits and savings of dollars, either making money or saving money. Either way, it comes off the top or the bottom line and you're guaranteeing that these processes give you the right files at the right time as quickly as possible. Obviously then eliminating errors and omissions as a byproduct of your workflow is key. Uh, if we can make sure that these things happen simply by changing the state of your file and not having to kick off any of these processes, we've really locked that down to a process which is really set and forget. And finally, as I said, that these capabilities can be extended, they are completely agile and scalable, and they can grow as your installation might grow as well, uh, as you increase uh, the number of users you have uh, and the number of jobs that are getting executed, we can certainly uh, increase the capacity of your Cool Orange job processor or processors as the case may be, so that uh, any number of jobs can get executed and your, your data can stay up to date very quickly. So in terms of the uh, solution we're talking about here, the, the package service offering that A2K are, are talking about with you guys is um, we have uh, the, the default action is a trigger of a vault lifecycle transition. So it would be a file state change from something like work in progress to review or review to released. That would be the trigger that we're looking at. There may be some other options that can come along and we have, um, we have the capability to talk about those if required, but we're using the, the, uh, the standard offering here to be triggered during a lifecycle state change. Um, the automation is really unlimited with Cool Orange, but what we're focusing on here in the product that we're putting to you guys today is obviously the uh, creation of DWF files, uh, auto PDF file creation, uh, single sheets of native files generally, uh, but we can have that triggered to uh, run a number of tasks, whether that be to rename them, locate them to external locations, uh, but the PDF generation is obviously one of those things that, uh, that we can do as part of the package. You've also got the option to select uh, two other file types uh, from a list, mate, that could be DXF, uh, DXF flat patterns. Uh, you can see there are a couple of examples, CSV files of bombs, for example, we can extract this, the uh, bill of materials to a CSV file and send that out for people in purchasing to pick that up and start to buy components once uh, designs have been released. Step files, STL files, a number of different types. Those files are then automatically stored in the vault and they're linked back to the native file as part of the automation routine. Uh, and possibly copied out to an external location. A shared location could be a network location. It could be a cloud location, but we can certainly publish those files out to um, that external location for you as well. And lastly, um, there in terms of the uh, job processor end, we've got the creation of a notification email to the next Vault user group, whether that be a reviewing group or a manufacturing group on the release of the file. The second part of the solution is the power events. So all that stuff that we've just covered up the top is using power jobs on the job processor. Power events is a smaller piece of software that sits on your local machine at the client end. And that's doing things like locking files while they're being published. So no modifications can be made. So we're talking about those guardrails before where a file uh, can't, can't have something done to it while it's in process. So that would include publishing the file or maybe even just changing the state of a file while it's being processed. So if you've got a, a job out there that's running and publishing a number of released files, uh, copying them to external locations, notifying people that they're available, that would, that while those processes are taking place, Power Events would recognize that that file is being processed and it would stop you from moving that file from released back into work in progress to some sort of uh, new workflow on that file. So a couple of options we've got there in Power Events, which we'll put, we would put forward in this project um, for you to lock the files while they're being published and stop people doing things like changing the state while they're being processed. 
So um, the implementation roadmap that you can see here is that we will go through a questionnaire with you talking about some of the actions we talked about today, get some more detail from you about what sort of tasks you want to occur at various different life cycle changes finalise the scope of works for you. Uh, we have a quick check for site readiness. We would go through and make sure that things were all in order in your vault uh, and that you have the uh, various hardware available on things like a job processor, just to make sure that there's no surprises when we come along to implement the solution. Uh, we would then obviously have the implementation of the uh, scripts themselves, configuration of them, doing some testing and then handover. So we would uh, go through and make those adjustments to the standard scripts to suit your own environment with things like file naming conventions, um, copy to file locations, things like that. And then finally go live and transitional support. And, uh, and we estimate that this uh, amount of work for what we're talking about would be about a 1.5 day implementation program to get all that information together. Um, and assuming there are no uh, glitches or, or holdups with any of that, uh, we would uh, estimate that the package is, uh, indicates a level of effort of about that, uh, that amount of time. Um, so finally, the call to action there is to complete the questionnaire. I think I believe that the, uh, the invitation has some links to a questionnaire which would go through and ask you to fill in some information about things like what files you want created, uh, what kind of output you want, whether that be in, internally in the vault, whether it's external locations. So we would be looking at getting that questionnaire completed by you guys and, uh, and get as much of that information back to us so that we can go through and start to create the, uh, the custom automations for your site. Okay, um, so that's, um, that's as much as I wanna say. I'm very aware that I've been talking now for about 40 minutes and, uh, and I don't want to uh, completely monopolize the, uh, the session. So uh, I guess um, what I'll do is um, I'll hand it back to uh, Dexter. And as I said, there's a couple of people here uh, on the call that maybe I'll answer some questions if you've got any. And I know that some people have been putting some things through on the chat uh, line as well. So Dex, I'll hand it back to you and see whether there's any questions that have come through that need to be addressed at this point in time. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So at the moment, this looks like there's no questions. So we'll just wait for a few more minutes. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. It was a great presentation. Well, thank you. <laughs> First time. First one's always the coldest. Yeah, just a reminder for everybody who joined the call today. Number one, my name is JC Davis. I want to thank you for your attendance today. In the chat window, I put the link for the, uh, for the uh, actual questionnaire. If you'll fill out page one of that, it's a simple yes, no questionnaire. And you can send that back to info at atktechnologies.com. I believe that uh, Ian, um, to all the panelists, uh, has a question, Jeff. With the bomb creation, is there is item master needed in vault? Okay, yeah, I see that question. Um, that that actually might be a question that uh, possibly uh, Milt. If he's on the call there, may be able to add some color to that. I'm, I'm not 100% certain whether item master is needed for that output, but uh, is, Milton on, is Milton on the call, JC? Yeah, he's on the call, but uh, just to let uh, Ian know, and if Milt wants to add anything, A number one is item master can be used. If you're already using item master, you can continue to use it. But if you're not using item master, um, and you're importing your, your uh, items from ERP, uh, then you don't need to use the item master. But uh, this is what you've demonstrated today, Jeff, is purely automation. If you need to integrate uh, your bomb with ERP system, we're happy to talk to you about it through ATK. Yeah. Milt, are you on the call? Are you? Uh, you may want to unmute everybody. Jeff, uh, I think that's for. Um, I think that would be for Dex to do. Don't know whether yeah. I've got control of that. Milt, ah, certainly... I, I think I'm. Yeah. Yeah, I think go. I'm unmuted now. Yeah, go, Milt. I'm echoing now. <laughs> anyway. Um, 
Yeah, we can export the file bomb if that's what you need. Okay, so we don't require the item master to provide that capability within the PSA. Correct. Yeah, great. Okay. All right, thanks. I hope, I hope that answers your question there, Ian. You, you only get to use the functionality that's available uh, you know, via the file bomb from, the, from say, Inventor or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep. But if you want the extra stuff from the item master, then obviously you have to use it. Sure. Yeah, so Mill, what they're doing is they're using what Ian's just put in the chat is they're using the item master created from the IAM. Um, but yeah, if you're populating your item, if you're using the item master to create your IAM, and you need that bomb to be exported, as Milt said, we can certainly export that bomb. Right. Yeah, either way. Okay. All right, any, uh, any other questions from anybody while we're still on the session here? We've got uh, the right people to answer them. Okay. Is, um, yeah, anybody else also from uh, H2K? Uh, I know we've got um, Jason, who's uh, one of the senior strategic account managers uh, with H2K, Jason Howarth. I think he's on the call. Um, if uh, you guys have got anything to add to people that are listening, please feel free. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, no, nothing to add, uh, only to say that, uh, you know, if you, if you do have any further questions, um, please don't hesitate to, to come through to H2K. Uh, we'll do our best to help you. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Okay. So one other thing, Jeff, is that I believe ATK is going to put on this same webinar next month. So right. for those of our who may not have been able to attend today, that are your constituents or your team. If you'd like to let them know and maybe uh, keep an eye on this space when we announce the next webinar, you can invite them to the call to see it firsthand. Right. There's, um, there's a question that's come through on the Q&A panel too. I don't know whether you guys can see this when I'm bringing it up on my screen. I think you might be able to. Um, does ATK have experience with Fusion Lifecycle? Um, I'm not sure whether I'm the best person to answer that. Uh, I, I would not be the person to go to for that. We do have some other resources internally who have some more in, experience with Fusion. And we also have access to some other technical resources that do work with Fusion more as well. So um, yeah, um, for, uh, I can't remember the name, the, the guy who asked that, uh, Alex. Uh, Alex, for you, to answer your question, uh, while, um, while I might not be the guy that would deal with that area, we certainly do have some other resources internally and also access to some resources that work with us that uh, can offer some uh, advice and expertise in that area with Fusion Lifecycle as well. Um, that being more the cloud-based solution for people. That's obviously not something that can work uh, with, uh, with Cool Orange in, 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 such, in the same way as we've been talking about today. We're talking about a different environment there, but, uh, but we certainly have access to people that can help you in that area, Alex. Right. So, Jeff, if I can, um, if I can add to that. So, yeah. Cool Orange is in partnership with Autodesk directly, and we've created the connection which generates Vault PLM, which is Vault the Fusion Lifecycle. So if you're looking for that integration, please work with the A2K personnel um, and talk to us. Right now, um, our integration is is cohesive, it's there. Um, you'll see a lot more at Autodesk University, um, but what you're able to do is connect your vault directly with Fusion. Right, okay. Thanks, JC. Yep. Uh, as JC mentioned there too, just he did mention make mention of Autodesk University. That uh, is coming up fairly soon, and because that's a digital event this year, uh, I believe that attendance is free. So if anybody's interested in having a look at what's on offer at Autodesk University, rather than having to get on a plane and go overseas, which nobody's doing at the moment, uh, you might want to go on and have a look on the Autodesk website and find out about Autodesk University and jump onto some of those classes.
Okay. Thanks, Jeff. So I think we'll just wrap it up there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so we've got the just the last one there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so thanks, JC, as well. And thanks again for joining us in today's webinar, everyone. So you can view our future upcoming webinars. You can visit, visit a2ktechnologies.com.au forward slash events. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now.